nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Hello, everyone. My name is Gerhard Klimek. I'd like to start out from the NanoUp Hope page today in the recitation on semiconductor education. Uh, if you click here on this link or the figure on semiconductor education and workforce development, we'll talk about simulation-based immersive learning today, specifically about MOSFET tools. So in this landing page, uh, we have our highlighted immersive uh, learning through simulations. We also have um, uh, some features, some uh, items of our open courseware that is available. These are some selected uh, uh, courses. Uh, some of these courses will go with new textbooks now, and these are listed here. And of course, many of our apps on NanoHub are evolving around electronics and materials. We also have tools online that require some more expertise than apps, and we have categorized them in here. Uh, we're also um, starting to host more commercial software, such as MATLAB, ThermoCalc, and Silvaco software will be coming here soon. Uh, furthermore, we have a variety of curated resources and partners that we highlight on this page, and we have an ongoing faculty engagement, uh, specifically this recitation series where, um, uh, where we have recorded these previous uh, recitations, and also this session will be recorded in uh, in this link on this page as well. So let me dive into our immersive learning uh, through um, simulations. We have a variety of um, uh, tool sets available uh, that deal with devices and TCAT simulation, quantum mechanics. We also have a virtual lab available and a variety of other um, uh, tool sets. So today I wanna focus on the semiconductor fundamentals which is Abacus. So Abacus really goes through a variety of tools. It's an assembly of different tools, and those tools are the ones you typically would use when you teach semiconductor devices and the fun fundamentals thereof. So you typically start with crystals, then you develop band structure models, you deal with bulk semiconductors, then you typically dive into PN junctions, bipolar junction transistors, and MOS capacitors. And those six here are covered in the previous six recitations. And today, I want to look at MOSFETs. So here we are. Uh, we're going to look at MOSFETs. And in Abacus, uh, we have a, um, a, a variety of exercises that we have assembled. And if I click on this link here, I ultimately go to the tool that um, uh, is really the app uh, that really has all these simulation tools buried in it. So the previous page was a group page where we assemble all this material. And if I launch this tool here now on the launch button, it'll launch a um, a session of the Abacus tool that's starting here. And uh, as I had shown in the previous recitations, it is... Um, uh, starting with a splash screen of uh, these different tools. And today we'll be talking about the MOSFET lab, so you could click on here, or you can get any of these tools also in this drop-down menu. So here I'm going to go into the MOSFET. So MOSFET is a uh, tool that is using the um, Padre toolset that was developed at Bell Labs in the early 90s. And we have uh, received access to that uh, with Nano for quite a while. And we have built these apps around this full-fledged industrial tool. So in this uh, specific tool or app, you can uh, model a, um, a transistor. And here's sort of a family of transistors as depicted here, where you can uh, look at a MOSFET N-type or a a p-type device so you basically have uh, and then p-type devices you can also look at others like a, a double gate device like this or an soi device like this so you have families of devices uh, in which you can um, have students um, explore the various features of these uh, transistors so as i mentioned this is an industrial strength tool this tool Padre, the engine, uh, actually uh, was used to design transistors 
at Bell Labs in the 90s. And if we go just for reference to uh, Moore's Law, uh, in the 90s, we were uh, roughly at uh, several hundred nanometers on gate lengths. So I'm going to start out with a 250 nanometer uh, transistor that I'd like to simulate here and show you what you can see in these simulations. So I basically have this out of box, I'm not doing anything, and I want to simulate a long channel transistor, and I hit simulate. And it turns out uh, that simulation was already run by somebody. And uh, so we just pull the existing result out, and you see a um, IDVG characteristic. So drain current versus gate voltage sweep. So as you uh, open the channel up more and more, you have more and more current flow. And the blue line is for a uh, drain voltage that is very small, 0.05 volts. And the upper curve is for drain voltage of one volt. So you have source and drain um, applied one volt. That can be set here in this voltage sweep tab here. So uh, basically, we start from 0.05 up to 1 volt in two steps. And then uh, we ramp the gate voltage from minus 0.1 to 1 in 16 points. So that's what you see here. If I go back now and go to 90 nanometers, and here we go. Uh, we have now a 90 nanometer transistor compared to a 250 nanometer transistor. And you can already see something very interested. Here um, in the so-called sub-threshold region for a very long transistor, uh, whether or not you have a high source drain voltage uh, or a low source drain voltage, uh, the behavior is roughly the same. If you go to a 90 nanometer node, there is already here a, uh, a quite a bit of difference. There is more leakage current flowing when you have a higher um, drain voltage. So this is um, what one calls source um, uh, drain induced barrier lowering. So you actually have more current flowing at a um, um, at a higher uh, drain voltage. So I can go to the next. Um, node, a uh, scaling node to 65 nanometers. And you're seeing something interesting here where now also the blue line comes up quite a bit. Let me now compare uh, all the three simulations that I've done here um, and put them all on the same scale. And I'm going to turn off the high uh, drain voltage curves and compare them. So this is low drain voltage. And you, here's the 250 nanometer node. Here's the um, 90 nanometer node. And here's the 65 nanometer node. So in an ideal world, a switch would be really off, right? And when there is um, supposedly uh, the off switch is off. But here you already see there is a change in the leakage current by um, over two orders of magnitude, and as you go further to the 65 nanometer, you have another order of magnitude more leakage, even in a small drain bias case. Uh, now, if we go to a um, the high drain bias, let me turn these blue curves off and turn on the red curves, you see this effect is even more dramatic. You really have this effect of source uh, drain, uh, the drain use barrier lowering. So you get way more current flowing in the off state. And the simulator seems to have issues in converging. So um, this again, this transistor, uh, this tool set under the hood was designed in the 90s. It's classical transport, uh, drift diffusion. Um, if you want to uh, have better results, you have to tune this uh, simulator a little bit. So let me. Uh, change some parameters and, and show you how you can get to um, even smaller transistors and then explore what happens here um, at these um, highly scaled transistors. So let me launch another instance here of Abacus. So in this part of the demo, I would like to um, explore 
uh, what happens as you make transistor gates smaller and smaller. And in order to demonstrate that, I have to change a few parameters uh, to make sure uh, this, uh, uh, this simulator converges. So what I'll do is I go here in this voltage sweep and uh, I'm, I'm changing uh, it such that there's more voltage points being taken in the gate voltage. So that helps convergence from point to point. Also, as we are making these transistors smaller, we really can't apply all that much drain bias over it. The simulator will not converge. So I have to reduce this um, applied uh, drain bias to only up to 0.6 volt. So that's a key element here. What I also want to do is um, I'm going to take some slices along the transistor uh, length. And I'll tell you where that is. Uh, I'll set that to 67. And I'll set this here to 75. Now, um, now I'm going to go into structural properties. I'm going to start out by a very long transistor, 250 nanometers long. Uh, again, that's a node from the uh, mid-1990s, 1996 or so. I hit simulate. And OK, so here we got the result. Now let me go in and and change this, um, reduce the uh, channel length to uh, 180 nanometers. All right, so I went from 250 to 180. Let me skip down now to the, skip the 130 and go to the 90 nanometer node. Next, I'm gonna go to the 65 nanometer node where we had issues of convergence if I didn't change the uh, drain voltage in a previous simulation. Again, this runs. Now I'm gonna go to, I believe the next node is 45, yep. That's 32. All right, so what I have done is I've run seven simulations starting from a 250 nanometer transistor, then a 180 nanometer transistor, a 90 nanometer transistor, 65, 45, and 20 nanometers. And you, you clearly see as I go through the sequence here, how this blue line, which is the low drain bias um, curve, is um, basically bending up more and more. So, and the, so in blue, we have the uh, low drain bias, 0 0.05, and here the red curve is the high drain bias, 0 0.6 volts. For the long transistor, these two curves virtually coincide, meaning this transistor really switches off quite nicely. You can probably measure this slope here, and that should be very close to 60 millivolt per decade for a tr ideal transistor. Now, let me do this. I'm going to compare. Uh, let me comment first. So as we scale down, uh, these two curves start to separate a little bit more. Here they're still running in parallel, so the slope overall roughly remains the same, but you really see how the leakage current is increasing as I'm making these transistors smaller. And the red curve starts to be above the blue curve by quite a bit more, and that's drain and use barrier lowering. If I now go to a go to the 65 nanometer transistor, you see this even more. 45 even more but here now you also see how the slope is starting to be quite different also the slope of the here is no longer as steep as the other transistors and here look at this at the 20 nanometer transistor this transistor barely turns on and off right the, the difference between off current and on current is less than an order of magnitude so let me compare all these curves and just let's look at um 
only the high bias curves, because that's what we're really ultimately interested in, right? We want to uh, uh, drive circuits under a reasonably high bias and drive other circuits. And so here we compare these transistors from, let me turn off the blue curves. And not switch in between. So really you see here is the 180 nanometer node. Here is the uh, 130, 90, I believe that's uh, the 60, 45, 20 nanometer node. You really see how the transistor is degradating. So you make the standard transistor smaller and smaller, it's going to be more and more leaky. So let's figure out whether we can see that in some of the internal properties of this uh, transistor. So I'm going to look at um, the potential first for the long device at initial bias. Now, let's not do all. And so here's a 2D contour plot of um, this uh, transistor potential. So think of this here is here up here is source, here's drain. Can explain this curve a little bit. Um, source, drain, here's the channel at um, uh, for 250 nanometers. So you can measure this from here, right? 50 nanometers up to 300 nanometers, long channel, source is up here, drain is here. Now if I apply uh, a final bias, go back in here. I can hear. So here's the source, still at high bias. Now the drain has a lower bias, and the electrons are going to flow in here. And um, the reason why I wanted to make a cut, I want, I was interested in um, looking at this device here at roughly 75 nanometers, I wanted to take a cut of this potential. So let me take a cut of this potential at 75 nanometers at the initial bias. So here it's along the device, potential at equilibrium. So here, this is the potential. Um, and you have to think of this as the negative of the conduction band edge. So here the electrons are uh, sitting in the source, here's the drain, and there's a barrier in between that has a significant height. Now, um, this is at equilibrium, and if I do this at final bias, you see, um, so again, this is the negative, think of this here, then look at the transistor upside down, you have electrons sitting here, they want to get to the other side and fall down the drain, so they go up here in this potential landscape. Okay, so you see here is the barrier for the for the electrons. Now, if I go back into my uh, potential for final bias in this plot here, so I'm uh, looking at the same device I just did. Now I want to make this channel shorter. You see how these, these contours are separating more. And basically, as you go down in device, you basically lose control of the channel. And more and more, basically the barrier in which, which um, uh, prevents the electrons from flowing, the gate is becoming weaker and weaker. And actual bias. Okay, so let me scale this down. This is going here. So basically, you see how this um, barrier here is vanishing, meaning there's electrons just flowing right through. And if I look at these um, cuts of the electron density in one direction, so let me look at the potential in 1D. Now, this is on 
And for the 20 nanometer transistor, let me put them all on the same scale. You basically see how the barrier is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And therefore, more and more electrons are flowing at the off um, state. Okay, so the barrier that prevents electrons from flowing through is getting smaller and smaller. So this is a cut uh, at 67 nanometers right under the gate. It's along the length of the device at a, at a height of 67 nanometers. So we compare that again here and the potential initial bias. Let's not look at all of that here. So I'm cutting right here, 67. So I'm cutting right here along this direction. So you basically see how you lose control of um, the electrons. So here, this is at zero bias. Barrier gets smaller and smaller. If I now do the same and look at final bias, so the final bias, see that for all of them is roughly the same. But basically, you see that at final bias, this transistor is completely open. There is no more barrier. There's no more control over this transistor. So you can think of this again. This is the barrier, the negative of a barrier. And you see how the barrier gets smaller and smaller. And what you see here is this drain induced barrier lowering, right? We apply this voltage here. And as we make the channel shorter and shorter, we really lose control of the channel. And that is why these curves look like this, where the leakage goes up as you make the devices uh, smaller and smaller because the barrier is vanishing. And ultimately, you don't really have a transistor anymore. So this is one way to look at uh, transistor scaling of classical transistors that have um, a typical 2D layout of source and drain or the gate. So, so this is really why uh, we are now have moved to um, uh, FinFETs and to nanowire like transistor and nano sheets. And you can begin to explore some of that in this tool as well by looking at double gates and, and SOI devices, but that's a different demo. So, um, with that, I think I'll, I'll conclude the demo and I'll, I'll take some questions or some, we can discuss some concerns and. Um, uh, open up for the audience. So thank you very much. Yeah, the first question is at thin oxide, is there consideration of gate current? Um, I presume what is meant is gate tunneling current. And um, I don't know if gate tunneling is included in this transistor model. I would have to look it up on in the output log, which describes the input. And I don't know if tunneling is one of the inputs in, in here. Um, I don't think it has gate tunneling in here, is my, is my gut feeling, but I, I'm not positive. I think this tool in principle has a tunneling model, a local tunneling model, but I'm not sure if it's turned on. He did confirm that uh, he was asking about gate tunneling. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the natural, natural question. I, I have to punt on that, I am not sure. I'm not sure if gate tunneling is included and even if it can be included. Certainly, it doesn't seem there is an, an option for it. Let me look at what transport energy balance. No. Um, I, I would presume not is my, my gut instinct. Okay. Um, maybe we can, I can go on thin ice and uh, I can look at some um, dual gate um, simulation. So we watch this here. And we said you can take the standard transistor down, and I showed you uh, scaling this down. But let me now go to a 
a double gate M type device. And um, let's see, I'm just going to run the default case. I presume that's for the cached result. So for 100 nanometers, also the sub threshold looks much better. So if I look at okay, my previous simulation, at 130 nanometers, I already saw a deviation and at 90 nanometers, clearly the uh, uh, drain bias was already uh, inducing uh, an increased leakage. So if I look at this here, that is starting to happen at um, higher gate voltage, but here in the sub threshold, uh, the two are still looking pretty decent so if i now make the channel onto 65 nanometers let's see we find and so here you do have um, also degradation so there is drain and use barrier lowering and let me look at the electron concentration at the initial bias So it's pretty decent control. So there's low electron density in the middle of the channel at the initial bias. And let's look at um, the higher bias. So here you see high doping. You see um, channels that are really forming um, on the edges. So. I saw a question pop by. So, um, and you really see that this channel is pretty empty of electrons. So you see decent control from left or right. And I've not played with these dual gate devices much, but what I would wager is that if you make the channel thinner, you're not going to change your current much. And um, and really you can crank make the channel thinner and just get the same kind of current out and we can play with that as a hypothesis so let me look at uh, the junction junction depth folks let's make it half let's see what happens i haven't done that i'm always ready to make a little bit of a fool of myself trying to do something so this actually needs to run the simulation now and this uh, might take a minute so um, I saw another question pop by. Could you maybe read that out to me? Yes. The question is, can we tweak with mobility models in the simulation? Yes, I believe so. So that's here. And uh, take one that's not running. So there is a variety of effects you can turn on and off in the mobility model. So you can have a field dependent mobility. You can have concentration. Uh, dependent ionized impurity scattering, um, electric field uh, dependence. Um, we can include uh, include impact ionization, um, and you can muck with the overall mobility. Um, the the individual mobility parameters are not exposed. But they, I'm, sh I'm sure these are additional parameters that in principle can be set in MOSFET. So if you really wanted to do that, you can go to the general Padre tool. And in there, you can really uh, uh, modify all kinds of um, Uh, parameters, uh, including uh, mobility models, etc. So you have full access to modify this 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 input deck. You can start from an input deck here, where you can uh, look at the output log, download it, and copy and paste that input deck. Well, we have to take out these reporting lines, and and make that work in Padre. So there you can really, to your heart's content, uh, mess with the various models. And there's a Padre manual of some 100 pages or so that, that goes through all these options.
in general, in this sort of app-like tool, we don't have that exposed. Okay, we have another question. Can you please show consequence of impact ionization? Also, can we control where the impact occurs? So the only thing I would do is I would play with this, and my gut feeling is that this will happen at high biases. Um, so I would, um, what I do, I would go nano.org. MOSFET, launch it, and I would we go here to a long device, and I would expect that we can drive that over a higher bias, up to two volts, and then let's see. I'm going on the nine so I've not done this, but let's do this. Let's see what happens. So this is now running a, a long transistor. Hopefully it converges and works well. I, I'm not so sure about all the voltage ranges. And then what I would do is I would turn on the impact ionization model. And I am not sure if it dumps out additional output files. So we'll, we will see that as it runs. And this might run five, six minutes, maybe 10 minutes. It's hard to tell. I don't run this tool very often, but it, let's see the conversions. When these lines get really long, I'm kind of worried, then, then this tool is, has a hard time converge, uh, with convergence. Yeah. And these are messages that obtain when, when some of the data is not being dumped out properly. So let's see what happens. So again, this is not something I have done. I'm just seeing if I, if I can get some results out. Okay. So let's look real quick at the um, potential at final bias. Yeah, so all this looks pretty good. And see, um, the drop is, is really distributing itself uh, more and more over the channel, like you would expect in a, in a long channel device. And then let's see what happens when we turn on impact ionization. I'm going to turn on bipolar carriers. Let's see what happens. Um, while this is running, I can maybe take another question. Um, someone asked, can we download the e-field potential for analytical modeling? Um, I believe so. So you can go to here. Let's look at the uh, potential for final bias. Oh, this is this this is the one that didn't converge. Uh, but here, so let's look. Here's the contour. Oh, see here, this is actually where uh, the 3D view makes a bit more sense. This is the the double gate device, and I said most of the electrons will be um, well. So 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 they they fall down right here into into the channel. Uh, let's look at the initial bias. Yep. So you can download data like this. And you would have to, this is a three-dimensional file. So you can um, uh, download the VTK data and that has all the 3D data in, in here. And I think I've seen additional output options if you want it. Okay, a plot along length. So you can set um, cut lines where you'd like to have 1D plots along a certain length of the device. But you have to be judicious where you place it. So, and then you can extract a cut line along a certain direction at a certain depth. 
Um, otherwise, you end up exporting three-dimensional data in a VTK file, so you can dump it here. And here is this uh, structured data set where you have the three-dimensional arrays of X, Y, Z, et cetera. And you can extract the data from there. So you can get to the data in 3D. And if you really want cuts, you have to define the cuts here. Um, let's see. Maybe I can do this with you. Which one is this now? This is this guy. So let's look at this. Um, where do we want to cut? So you said you wanted to say, look at the potential here. So I would say we could take a cut here at, I think this is going up to 75 or so. Let's take a cut here at 70. And if you wanted to have a cut, say, along the, uh, the depth, so maybe we cut here at 2, 210. So this goes off now and, and calculates everything because it doesn't, it doesn't interact in a sense with the older data to provide a cut uh, capability. So you'd have to run it. I saw another question flash by. Yeah, we have a few more questions. Um, someone said, I see from the NanoHub website, you will soon host Silvaco's tools. My school pays for these tools at the moment. Will they be free on NanoHub? They will be free for academic use, yes. And in fact, we are also thinking about hooking up the Silvaco tools into these uh, app-like tools where it doesn't run Padre, but runs the more modern engines that are possibly faster and more stable. And um, so, so there's going to be work uh, ahead of us. And it seems like when I turned on these two options here, it doesn't look like um, we were getting a result. So let me see what the problem is. It seems like I'll put log on this. Yeah, it wasn't converting. So I would have to play a little bit with this impact ionization, etc. So I'm sorry. On this part, let's see what came out. Ah, here are the 1D plots. So now we're having um, 1D plots along the channel. So let's look at the doping. It's flat in the channel. Makes sense. Why? Let's make sure I get my orientations right um let's look at final bias in y and an x so x is the growth direction here so y is along the channel so let's look at doping so here you uh this is in microns going over 70 nanometers and doping here going over so this must be the, uh, the length of the device, and this is the depth of the device, which makes sense, high doping and then going into the body. So let's look at the electron uh, electrostatic potential in here at equilibrium and at, finite by, at final bias. And that is taken at this cut of 70, 70 nanometers. So 
yes, you can extract the potentials for analytical expressions, extrapolations, etc. All right, the next question, what is the next dimension beyond the NEMO 5 transistor? I understand the question. NEMO 5 is a tool set that came out of my group, which we didn't really discuss tonight. Um, and it models all kinds of things, not just one type of transistor. So there's not a transistor named after NEMO 5. NEMO 5 is a tool set uh, that can model, say, nanowires or finfets, et cetera, and it can model uh, 2D materials, um, graphene, carbon nanotubes, you name it. Really, it can virtually model any transistor-like structure um, on an atomistic basis. Um, I don't know that it has pointed to a new transistor, but I do know that it's being used at Intel to design the next generation transistors that are going to be in your phones or in your CPUs, wherever. I hope that answers the question, even though I'm not totally understand the, que the, the question as it was asked. Okay, thank you. The next question is, any chance to play with the drain structure, say, make it deeper or shallow asymmetrical um, to source? I think the baseline assumption in this um, setup here is that it's sy symmetric. You can change uh, uh, doping profiles uh, quite a bit to have Gaussian and halo doping, um, which is still going to be symmetric in, in this type of structure. But at least you can change with the doping itself, the doping profiles, etc. But you cannot, I don't think you can introduce an asymmetry between source and drain in in this app. You can, of course, in the general Padre tool set. All right, and the last question we have, do you have any set of activities that I can assign to my students? Oh, yeah. So um, here we have some homework assignments that are associated um, with this MOSFET tool, per se. But um, we also have, um, you go to NanoHub and you go into this um, uh, workforce development page and you navigate your way th to, to Abacus here. Um, Abacus in general has um, in these sub pages, homework assignments, and then there's a faculty only page uh, where you can, uh, as a faculty member, you can uh, join this group. And in there, uh, we provide uh, more homework assignments and we'll also start to assemble the solutions of the homework assignments as well. And this is um, only well, we, we like to limit it to faculty, let's put it this way. And ultimately, I would love to foster people uploading their own homework assignments and share them with the community, obviously. Great. Thank you, Gerhard. That's all the questions that we have. Please stay in touch and let me know or us know if we'd like to follow up with you on how to insert NanoHub into your classroom. So thank you.